All right, Jessica, welcome to Living Off Rentals. Uh-oh. Thanks Anything? for having me. I'm excited to be here. Okay, okay. There's a little bit of a delay there, so I just want to make sure we're, uh, <laughs> we're good on the, the sound. All right. I think we're good now. All right. So today, if you're, uh, if you're tuning into this, this is uh, a little bit different. Um, so, so I work with Jessica, um, and typically she's the one asking me a lot of questions because uh, she manages all of my back office stuff and um, keeps the, the trains running on time. But today I get to sit back and kind of uh, relax while I ask her a bunch of questions and put her on the hot seat. So this is great. Um, but uh, I'm going to let Jessica introduce herself and, and share a little bit about her um, business here in a second. But just for a little bit of background, um, so Jessica and I met uh, towards the beginning of this year, towards the beginning of 2020, and I was really searching for a virtual solution, you know, um, for, for some virtual help, I guess you could say. Uh, I'd been looking for a long time and uh, didn't really know how to approach it, um, and when I found out found out about powerhouse uh, planning Jessica's company I found that uh, it's run by or it's it's made up primarily of uh, military spouses which really interested me because uh, I know that this is a super talented group of people that um, a lot of times you know there's a there's a higher than normal unemployment rate because they constantly have to move around so it's either they choose a, a virtual job or they're constantly looking for new jobs wherever they're traveling to because their spouse is obviously constantly moving in the military. So I was really drawn to this. Um, and then once I saw all the things that Powerhouse could take off my plate, uh, it, it seemed like kind of a no brainer. And, and now, you know, looking back, I kind of wonder how I existed without Heather, my uh, executive assistant, because she's a rock star. And, um, you know, I've got the, a full time job. I've got the the real estate business and then the YouTube channel and, and the podcast and then a family. And so I'm looking at it now. And, and of course you fill the void as, as you grow, but I'm able to do so much more um, because of, of the assistance that I've gotten. So, um, so I'm excited to dive in. If you're, if you're watching this or listening to this and you've probably thought about hiring virtual team members um, in your rental property business, and especially right now, I'm, you know, with this environment with COVID going on. So um, Jessica's team helps fill the, these entrepreneurial needs. Um, and, you know, there's uh, a lot of times people will have different ideas of what a virtual team kind of looks like, or, or people maybe have hired somebody in the past or tried to hire somebody and it, it went poorly. And so now they've written off virtual work, but um, I'm a huge advocate for it. And uh, it's, it's certainly helped me. So, so I'm looking forward to sharing that uh, uh, today on this interview, but I will not, I'll, I'll stop talking now and uh, I'll let you uh, fill in the, your background and how you got into this business. Yeah, yeah, so my background, way background, um, before Powerhouse, uh, I worked in colleges and universities and did leadership programming for students. And then, um, then I met my husband during that same time frame, and he's in the Coast Guard and he warned me, like we're gonna move a lot and career is going to be tricky. So we had to have some very big discussions, like right in the beginning of our marriage. And, um, and he was accurate. <laughs> we have moved six times in 14 years. Um, so our first move, I could not find a job because education is incredibly hard to find a job in. And I ended up taking an EA position at a government contracting firm. And it was awesome. It was awesome because I got to grow with a company and learn a lot about um, running a small company and uh, the CEO just was fantastic and he let me um, learn probably more than uh, at the time I think I was 24 or 25 and it was just so awesome the opportunities that I got and uh, and then of course we started like oh I think we're gonna have children and so we started processing what that was gonna look like and the way my husband's schedule is he usually rotates sea time and shore time we call it and so um, like currently right now, he's sea time. So he's out two months in two months. And we were trying to figure out how can I continue to fleet ahead and have a really successful career and support and cheer on his career. And the answer was we kind of had to come up with what primary and secondary was gonna look like. And that's what we joke about. And so we decided for a certain duration of years, he would be primary and, um, and I would be secondary, meaning I would, always, or I would be primary with the kids 
And so we were trying to figure out though, how I could still have a career. And at the same time, someone came to me and said, Hey, would you be willing to do some side work? And I'm like, yeah, I sure would. And so as I left the um, corporate world, I started powerhouse and then I started to gradually grow it. And I was back, not having that healthy work-life balance. <laughs> and so that's when I got to the point, I'm like, Oh my gosh, who am I going to hire? How can I even have this company? And that's when I really just honed in on military spouses. I feel like they're overly qualified, underutilized, sitting there, looking, looking. Past eight years, we've grown where we do, um, do the basics, like you've talked about, the VA support um, or EA support. Uh, but we've also grown into areas that you would never want me personally doing, like web design, IT support, and we found different people that can fill those holes as well. So that's kind of how we've grown over the past eight years. And now we are a legit quote unquote powerhouse where we have a wide variety of people that um, do a wide variety of things. And we kind of come alongside companies and fill in holes as needed. That's awesome. Um, and I, I, what I noticed when I was looking for different, um, uh, I guess, virtual help, like, and, and the terminology, I guess, is, is the thing I think people struggle with, because it's like, I, I look at what I have now with Powerhouse is like a, a virtual team, but really what I was looking for initially was a virtual assistant, and that's what I thought I needed, kind of somebody who just does everything and is an expert at all things, which I guess probably is why I struggled for years trying to find that person, because it's kind of a unicorn. Um, so I guess, how is Powerhouse different than a lot of other virtual organizations that are out there? Yeah, that's a great question. And we are different in the fact of um, we really, about three years ago, we switched over where we're primarily retainer-based. So we come alongside, and you're a great example, Kirby. <laughs> you, we came alongside you, and we provide not only the EA support or slash VA, whatever word you want to use for Heather, um, but we also, when, when you and I had a conversation, I'm like, well, who's doing this for you? And who's doing that for you? And I kind of went through a list of other things that I know it takes to run a business, and a lot in that conversation, I remember you saying, well, I'm doing that and I'm doing that and I'm doing that. And I'm like, okay, like, have you ever thought about lightening that load a little bit? And this is what it could potentially look like. Um, so we're unique in the fact of we are a legit virtual team where when you're with us through the duration of the contract, you have a, a remote team and you have one person that's your point of contact, which is me usually. Um, and I'm the project manager. That's the best way to look at me. And then then there's everybody kind of in the in the background that is working the magic and making it happen, but I'm the person that works directly with the client all the time. So um, it is a little unique. We, we do have some people that hire one-off people, but I would say our strong suit is we are a legit team um, over, I think our number right now, over 55% of the people at Powerhouse have been with us three years or more. So people get used to each other, like they get used to someone always QAing their work because that's the person that's always on their team. And um, we try to match people up that mesh well together and they stay together during the duration of that contract. And then if it works well, then we kind of pair them up with other uh, clients as well in the same fashion. Yeah, and that's kind of really what attracted me to it is it's like you're getting this whole team of experts to come alongside you, like you said. But I immediately thought um, that there's no way I could afford a whole team. Like I'm a, a solopreneur, I'm running my business. Um, the, you know, the, the living off rental side of things, my podcast and YouTube channel, it's not, I, I haven't monetized it in any way yet. So it's not really, you know, it doesn't really afford me um, the ability to hire a big staff. Um, but this, what I found was it's kind of a, um, uh, uh, the, the best of both worlds. And I apologize, we were talking before this about how, of course, someone's going to start mowing the second you uh, start one of these things. You might hear that in the background. But um, so, so you, you mentioned that the, the way you do this, uh, the, the way you structure it is on a retainer base. That's the, that's the best way to do it um, for, for having an entire team come on. So, so how do you decide, I guess, who's on the team and then when I hear retainer, I get a little worried as an entrepreneur, especially having worked with lots of contractors in my real estate business over the years, because yeah. um, I want to hire for specific results. And so, um, you know, how, how do you set that up initially? And then how do you uh, monitor, you know, the return on, on investment? Like what, you know, the results that uh, 
that somebody gives? Yeah, sure. So I think the first thing, how do we set up the team? Um, and that's definitely based off of a conversation of the client slash company in need. Um, and that's exactly kind of what you and I went through where we had the conversation of, um, I, you know, and I think I, I remember asking, and I do this with all clients, what all are you working right now? What do you love doing? What do you not love doing? Um, because I think that's key, especially as an entrepreneur. And that was me eight years ago. I did everything. And there were so many things that I was doing that I did not like doing. And honestly, I wasn't good at it. <laughs> and, um, and so I think that's how we come up with the team. We determine where your holes are and then what, um, what things you're willing to let go of in what, what areas you want to let go of. And then we go from there. And then as far as structuring, um, I mean, we, we very rarely at this point, we have a core team of people that we use. So structuring the team, it just comes easy to us because they've been with us for so long. So that's not that hard. Um, then your other question was ROI. Yeah, I love, people always ask me that. And I think for me, I, what I always tell people, a couple of things, I would say, well, what is your hourly rate worth? Like, and you have to think about what is your legit hourly rate and then think about some of the things that you're doing and then think about if you removed yourself from some of those things, could you grow, could you grow your business even more? And I it was in the same boat when I started Powerhouse for the first couple of years. I did everything myself. And then I realized, ooh, I need to bring on an EA. And then I realized, why am I still doing my own social media? Why am I writing my own resources? And so over the eight years, I've brought on people that do all of that for me as well. But what's been awesome by doing that, I've been able to then grow my own company because I'm not so much in the weeds in my company. And people are doing things for me that are um, way better than I could have done. <laughs> so I think, and then the other thing we do, which I think, you know, you've seen us, we do quarterly reports where you see all the deliverables that um, we've done for you over the past three months. We also track social media metrics and um, kind of gauge how we can increase and what's decreased and, you know, how we need to work with that. So we're, at least us as a company, we're constantly looking and monitoring to determine how is this fitting. Um, and then, you know, at the end of contracts, we start to have a conversation. What did you love? What did you not love? What do we need to grow in? Um, what could we remove? What could we add on? So you start to just it, it, it feels like a team working environment where you could call anyone right when you're in the office across the hall. Hey, Jess, like, let's talk about social media. It's the same kind of thing with powerhouse. It's that constant conversation to determine um, where do you want to get your ROI. But I always tell people that for me, how I gauge it is um, has my business grown because I have been able to step back and not take on the stuff that I shouldn't be. <laughs> And that's, I know that sounds kind of strange to some people, but um, I don't know. And, and you're, you'd be great to ask kind of the same question back to you because you've gone through this, right, over the past, what, four months. Um, you know, hopefully it's freed up your schedule to be able to grow everything you're wanting to right now. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I'm, uh, I'm definitely not an affiliate of Powerhouse Planning and I'm not like, you know, trying to sell anyone on this. I just, I, I love bringing on, like last uh, week we had the, the founder of Zebo, who's just a great guy and has a, a very cool platform. And it's very similar with this. It's just something that's helped me out a lot, like you mentioned. Um, and I'm, I'm one of those people who's like very uh, control, uh, control freak, I guess you could call it, um, where, you know, I want to control every aspect. And I think that, yeah. you know, and I think uh, subconsciously, I feel like, well, I'm going to do it best because it's my business and I'm going to make sure it gets done right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, and then also, I think at the same time, there's a lot of people who focus so much on growth and they're like, oh, I just need to hire, hire, hire so I can grow, grow, grow. Yeah. And, and, you know, they grow themselves out of business. And so, I feel like this is like that perfect middle ground for somebody who's, who's kind of like me, who's been doing it all themselves. They know that there's so many tasks that they need to offload, but they don't want to hire 10 people overnight and incur this massive overhead. Right. Um, so it's like, you can dip your toe in and, and like with, when, when we sat down, you were like, you know, what are the things that, that you're doing? And you went through the list of, of common things. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, you know, maybe some, some common things that are that are offloaded but I can tell you from just to add I guess a little bit of color from my perspective of, of working with you that there's 
when we're talking about a virtual team, my virtual team is made up of really five people. So I've got, you know, you as the project manager who comes up with the overall plan um, and, you know, in conjunction with me, and then you kind of keep the trains on, on schedule. Every week you're sending me, here's the, yep. the graphics for next week for, you know, the project or the plan that we agreed on. And then I've got Heather, my, my EA, who does, it feels like everything for me now, um, but she's uploading all the videos and podcast episodes and putting together my newsletter and, um, and, and full transparency. I, I kind of wanted to wait uh, to do this until we're working together a lot more in my real estate business, because I think that's the audience here. And it would be um, even more beneficial for people to hear how you're handling a lot of the, my real estate stuff, which I think is, is where we're going to grow into. Um, but, you know, I've, I started living off rentals this year and, and it's been a lot of online stuff. And it's just been a lot of stuff that has been easy for, for me to offload. And, and Heather has helped me out with that in, con, in conjunction with the real estate business. Like she's ordered the signs for me, you know, that we, we put in the front yard um, to get leads and, and she's ordered business cards and does just stuff that, you know, it takes time and you don't do. Um, and then we've got the graphic designer, uh, the social media strategist, and then the quality assurance specialist who goes through um, all the, the um, graphics and copy and all that. So, um, so everybody is, is an expert in their own field and then you bring them all together. So um, that's, you know, it's, it's worked out really well for me. And, and the way I've managed it really is, is just with a, a weekly meeting with um, Heather, you know, it's like 30 to 45 minutes and we go through the progress from last week and then what you know we're going to accomplish over the next week and um and then she's been great about uh suggesting things that you know she sees and um so it's it's been uh it's been a great relationship but i guess uh i'm curious what are some of the i guess misconceptions or or challenges you, you see people have uh with the virtual um workforce when when you're first getting to know them yeah, I think um, a lot of times people think they're going to be not very qualified uh, or they're, you know, they're people that just are um, fresh out of college or fresh out of their whatever the degree was that they learned um, their trade in. Right. And and I think that you quickly learn when you're with Powerhouse like we I, and I I do believe this and I'll say this forever, but I think that we have found the best of the best people um, and in one way, I think we've ensured that that happens. We find really good people and then we continue to try to find work for those people so that they want to stay married to us <laughs> and we keep that strong team unit. Um, and, and we're just, we're a different freelance company too. I think a lot of people think, and, and there are some freelancers that want one-off gigs and they want to just do their gig and move on. But ours is not a culture like that. We're a very unique uh, culture and we tell people this in interviews too like we do professional development we um, offer if people want mentoring we offer virtual book clubs so that people can grow professionally like it's very unique um, the other thing that's really really unique about us we hone in because I'm a huge believer that I want military spouses and anyone on our team to be able to grow and you usually get that if you're in the corporate office and so we've tried to find opportunities um, I'll give you a great example, Megan, who does social media for you. She's great at social media, but she's like, I want to grow and do other things. And so I'm like, what do you want to do? And so we transitioned her over a year ago. She's also a grant writer and has done phenomenal, like thousands of dollars that she has brought in for nonprofits writing. So we also provide an opportunity to grow individuals, which is unique. A lot of companies, um, freelance companies don't have that, but we do. Um, I'm trying to think of other misconceptions. I think the biggest one is just you're not going to have experienced individuals and probably you're not going to have as much ownership with the client, but, and you've hopefully felt this Kirby, like we jump in and we become part of your company. We want to know everything about your branding, everything about where you want to grow in five years, what you want your company to look like in 10 years. And, and we constantly are, I don't want to say nagging, but right, we've come alongside you to say, how can we grow you and how can we help you um, at a higher level? And so I never, I would never want people to think with Powerhouse that it's just a, um, you know, a one-off gig and we're done. Like it's a, we've come alongside you, how are we going to work together as a team? So. 
Yeah, I think that's the difference. And that was a misconception for me too. And it's probably uh, due to reading four hour work week, you know, uh, that came out like 15 years ago. And so everyone who read that book, you know, he talks about like hiring all these overseas workers at like a couple bucks an hour to do all these things for him. And so you get kind of a different misconception of, uh, of, of virtual work. And, and that's fine for, like you said, individual tasks. Yeah. And I've, I've hired um, different individual tasks that, that have really worked out well for specific things. But when it comes to um, really integrating with the business and understanding the business and, and keeping things flowing, um, it's been super helpful to have the level of experience that, that you've brought to the table. So I appreciate that. Um, and I, I, so I mentioned a couple best practices in terms of, you know, for me, it's worked really well to set up these weekly meetings just to go over everything on a re that's recurring on a regular basis and make sure we're on in sync. Um, and then the Loom videos, I think, were really helpful. You sent me some where you do like a screen capture. Loom is a just a screen screen okay. capture software. It's kind of breaking up a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Sorry. Can you can you hear me now? There we go. That's okay. <laughs> now I can hear you. Yep, I hear you. <laughs> okay. So so Loom uh, is a um, a software that just captures you know your screen while you make a video. So it's you know very easy to show somebody this is how I'm doing X Y and Z, and then you can just send them the link to the video. So that's been super helpful for me. Um, are there any other best practices that you recommend when either bringing someone on the team initially or screening them? Um, or, um, you know, in terms of regular management, that's, that's really resulted in, um, in better results than, than typical. Yeah, I think so. A um, couple questions there. So I think the uh, tools, yeah, Loom definitely, right? Zoom, all these things we, we now use because of COVID-19, <laughs> Skype. I mean, it's everything we're now familiar with. Um, but the other thing that's been awesome for us is Slack. And uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Slack, but um, Slack's been awesome because especially for us being a virtual team, we break it out by clients. We also break it out by over, you know, general company where we can all just communicate. We also have like, you know, fun water cooler channel where we can make people laugh occasionally. Um, and we do some fun stuff on Slack that keeps us all connected and keeps the teams going. Um, so Slack is, that's kind of been a good tool in Loom. Those are the top two tools. Um, and then let's see, what was the other question was, oh, like how, how do we find the right people and what does that look like? Um, well, so we do official interviews. It feels like just like you were interviewing for a you know, full-time job and we have the same exact questions we ask and we do go ahead and ask the freelancers exactly like you would ask in a normal interview. What is your greatest strength? What's your area of improvement professionally? Where do you see yourself in five years? And we ask them all of those questions because one thing I've learned, and I learned this the hard way, there are a lot of freelancers that actually want to um, be their own entrepreneur and start their own large company, which is super fantastic. And I cheer them on with my whole heart, but I have learned that those types of people will be the ones that don't want to stay long-term with Powerhouse. Um, and as I've spoke to earlier, I want to find people, love people, and then they stay with us um, because it, we start to just, you know, we have that smooth kind of, as you keep saying, the train, I keep the trains going. Um, yeah, so I think that's how we find the right people and we're really able to get, get all that information from the interviews. I also, which I would encourage anyone that doesn't hire a virtual team or someone to coordinate it, you should do a trial basis. And um, a great example with my graphic designers now, I hire all of them to do something for Powerhouse prior to using them for a client because I want to make sure that they, um, that what their resume said they can do, that they can fully do it because we crank out at Powerhouse are usually high level um, and they can't have errors and they do have to be top notch. And so I have learned over the years that I use them first before we use them on clients. Um, and I would say that to anyone, you know, hire people on a trial basis and see how it goes before you do um, super long term. Did I answer all the questions? I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all, it's great advice. Um, one thing I noticed too, is I, I've hired uh, a few other virtual workers in the past and it, the more, so like the more complicated the task, the more I recommend, or I felt more success, I guess, around like learning it myself first. Like, yeah. you know, I wanted to start a podcast 
in the past, but I never really dug into it. And I kind of hired some virtual help to help me with it, but it never really took off because yeah. I didn't put the effort. It was like, yeah, just go, go deliver something that I don't even know what I want, but you know, so you, you try to outsource these things that you don't even understand yourself. And I think that's where people have, you know, they, they say, well, you know, virtual work doesn't work because I tried to get them to do X, Y, and Z and, and they didn't do it. And it was like, well, you didn't even know what outcome you were after. So it's right. like a right. lose right from the start. So, um, so I'd say if it's kind of complicated like that, then learn it yourself. There's a lot of simple things like, you know, like the ordering the signs and stuff like that, where, you know, it's taken so much time off and I don't have to, I've done that. Like that's a pretty simple task. So, and those things are just, um, they pop up a lot more than, than you expect. So, yeah. um, so I'd, I'd add that one in there too, but, uh, I think those are all, all great ones. So, um, without naming any client names, um, are there any, you know, kind of horror stories that you have from working with clients or, or things that people, you know, you've seen do, do you know, do wrong or, or maybe could have done much better, um, and, and things that you would recommend not doing as, as somebody who's hiring a virtual team? Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, so yeah, I will say I've been super fortunate over the past uh, eight years. I, I can count on um, one hand how many like yucky situations that I've had. Uh, but looking back, it's almost comical because what people don't realize is I also take the weight of the yuck. And that's what I tell the people at Powerhouse. Like a lot of times there's yuck going on, but the entire team has no clue <laughs> that there's even yuck going on because I'm always, you know, the go between and um, I want to make sure the team's happy, the client's happy. Um, so I think the, the issues that we've had in the past, it's because it's exactly what, like what you just said, the client didn't have clear ex expectations of what they really wanted and we're action oriented, right? So we're just going to crank stuff out, do it, make something what we believe is awesome sent to client. But the reality is they don't know what they want until they see it. And then it's just tons of back and forth or um, that's kind of been the biggest thing. It's just knowing from both sides, what's what really you're wanting from a freelance team and what a freelance really can do. And then there've been people too, right? That will get they're on retainer with us. And so they think at 11 PM, we can turn something around by 6 AM the next day. So we've had some of those scenarios we've had a walk through to where, you know, we, we can totally do it, but we're probably going to have to on, add on an emergency fee and um, some things like that. So, but in general, it's, I don't, you know, um, I, I think that's the biggest thing. It's just clear expectations. Yeah. you. It, that's a great point that you brought up. Like people, last minute thinking of stuff and I, I feel like I've done that to you a few times where I'm like you know oh, I was chatting with Heather and like let's uh, do this by Tuesday or whatever but um, what I've noticed is that what this does for you is it forces you to plan ahead like the first yeah. thing that we did was sit down and say okay for the next six months what are the themes that that we want to have in our social media and what are, what is some of the content that, that you want to release and so we planned all this out and I feel like we're producing a lot of content, especially as a one man show and having a, a full time job in another business. Um, and it's, it doesn't feel like a massive lift because it's, it's planned out so, so far in advance. We're not just like jumping through hoops at the last minute. There's, you know, three episodes already recorded and being edited and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. so I think that's great. And I think it works the exact same in the real estate business too. Like, you know, what are, what are the goals that you want six months from now? Let's backwards plan it. So yeah. um, that's a, that's a great point. Um, so I guess if, if somebody's listening to this and they realize they're doing way too much um, and they need to take some of this stuff off their plate, what's, is there a exercise they can go through or what's the process for figuring out where they're going to find the most impact by, by offloading or what, what things they should offload first. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'll share from my own personal experience. So what, and I, and I walked through, you know, clients to this, I kind of talked about it earlier, but I'll tell you exactly like how powerhouse went through it. Um, as I grew powerhouse, I started to just, I, I kept a running list of everything that I was doing. And for me, I was obviously I do the day to day, the contracts, the hiring of the freelancers, the interviewing the freelancers, social media, doing our resources, doing our, building our website. I built our first website, which never should have happened. 
um, and, and all of those things. And so I made a list of everything that it took to run Powerhouse. And then I made another list of everything I love doing, like what fueled me because I still wanted my hands somewhat in Powerhouse. And so I came up with a list, what fuels me. And for me, that's client relations. I love it and working with team and coordinating. And then the things that I did not love and were a time suck. And for me, that was social media. That was um, some of the resources because it was taking me too long to research it because I wasn't knowledgeable in some of those areas. And so I, um, then what I did is I looked at what can I afford over the next year? What am I, and when you say afford, and I don't know where you were, Kirby, I had to look at it and think, what am I not going to make, right? Because I was a starting off entrepreneur. I was letting go of my money at that point to start bringing on people. Um, and it was scary, right? But I knew I was tired of the time suck of social media. So that was number one. <laughs> and then I just kind of started going through that. And then by year, it would have been year four, I was getting ready to have my third child. And still in growing powerhouse, we have had a, a grow rate of 200% a year um, for the past, like, I guess at that point, it would have been the two years at that point. And um, I, and someone actually, it was my mother-in-law was like, how are you going to still grow a company, have a third child and your husband's gone <laughs> every two months? And I'm like, that's a great question. And she's that's like, sweet. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, do you think maybe it's time to hire more help? And it's hilarious, right? Because that's what my company does. And so that's when I'm like, I need an EA. Like I need someone that can take all the contracting from me, um, get to know every, and, and it was, um, this might sound comical, but if all the entrepreneurs are listening will understand this. I had no one that knew my, my black box, meaning if something happened to me tomorrow, like no one knew how to pick up the pieces of powerhouse. And I realized that I needed someone else in my brain because that wasn't safe or healthy, that I wanted to make sure that, um, at the point we were at growing, I didn't want all these people to not have jobs that should something happen to me, right? So that's when I realized an EA was healthy and it was time. And I, and then I stepped out on, you know, faith again, like, all right, maybe I'll grow some more if um, I hire someone to take some of that load from me. And it, and that's what happened. So what I would encourage everybody to do, make a list and then think about what you love, what you don't love, and then think about what you can afford. And then just gradually take that list down, like, as you can start affording more. And that's what I've done. And now I'm at the point with Powerhouse, um, I'm doing what I absolutely love and I'm still growing the company. And I think, and I'm positive, it's because I'm doing what I love, right? I'm no longer um, in the weeds of doing things that I'm not good at and that I'm not happy doing. And, and I think people would be surprised feeling that, um, that level of freedom as an entrepreneur when you get there. And it's shocking that it took me so long to get there. <laughs> Yeah, that's, man, such great advice. And I love the fact that you brought in, like, you, you compared it with your, your financials at the same time, because I've heard advice, like I was listening to Michael Hyatt uh, do an interview once, and he's like, oh, you just need to start hiring before you're ready. And I was like, I've done that before. And it's, it doesn't always work out. You know, you're Michael Hyatt, that's great. Like, you know, you're, you're very successful and can do yeah. that. But that, you know, I don't think that's great advice. I think there is stuff that you still need to do yourself as an entrepreneur and then you like yeah. you said slowly offload over time based on you know wh what you can afford and sometimes you take a leap and you know a little bit but um it's all smart decision making so that's uh, such great advice um so uh i'll i'll wrap this up but i know so if, if you're watching this or you're watching the replay later um you know jessica heather megan they're all in the facebook group so um, go ahead and, and you can ask questions about uh, Powerhouse or about um, a virtual workforce or about anything. I'll, I'll answer Jessica Cantz or Heather, or, um, you know, we'll, we'll chime in. So feel free to ask your questions on the video and, and we'll check that out. Um, what's the best way if somebody wants to, to work with you or, or get to know you better or ask any uh, specific questions about their situation? How can they, how can they go about doing that? Yeah, I would, I mean, you can definitely check out our website and it has an, even an FAQ section that kind of walks you through um, some of the stuff you might be kind of confused about or wondering about, but definitely our website, um, powerhouseplanning.com. And then if you want to email me, you definitely can. It's Jay Birch, and I'm sure we'll post this somewhere, but it's Jay Birch, yeah. E-R-T-S-C-H at powerhouseplanning.com. Um, and then of course we have uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and you can follow us. And we always are doing, um, 
we also showcase different things each month themes for our in company about growing entrepreneurs or freelancers. So you can follow us on those platforms as well. And if you want to grow and learn there. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. And uh, it's been great working with you so far. So I'm happy that uh, we could, you know, share um, our relationship with uh, the whole community here so that other people can benefit as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.